We've installed our Media Smart Home Server, and now it's time to see how it fits into our lives. Now, once it's properly configured on your network, a task that should take you between a half an hour and an hour, depending on how much of the documentation you actually read. Once it's installed, though, you can access it now from any computer in your home or in your studio, if you happen to have a studio. Or you can actually access it from any remote computer as well. But we're going to save that side of the story for a later show in the season. Today, we're going to concentrate on local access from our PCs and Macs. So what's so important in our home digital lives that we need to back it up onto a home server? Actually, that's a pretty easy answer. Our photos, our music, our videos, our personal documents, letters, our accounting data, all of that sort of stuff. The HP Media Smart Home Server is designed to do four things for us. First up, it's going to help us organize all of our data and media, which is actually a huge task in itself. Then it's going to protect all of our memories, all of our files, all of our digital lives. It's designed to connect all of our computers together, to be the central point that everything is focused on and serve all of that information back out from that central point. And finally, it's designed to grow, to meet our needs as new capabilities are required. Now, these are pretty big jobs for one little and fairly quiet device. Let's see how it handles all of these tasks. So let's begin with looking at the software that installed with the server. This is the server's control center where we manage all aspects of the server. This first window we see shows us our shared folders which we'll use to access our photos, our music. We'll use this interface most often. There's also a tools area that we use to configure and manage all different aspects of the server. And there's a help and support area that we can go into to find more information about different things that the server can do and to answer any questions and learn more about its capabilities. But if we begin here, we can actually take a look at what photos we have already stored on the server and we can use this to begin to organize all of our different data. So for example, you're going to have photos on multiple computers. You'll also probably have photos backed up onto CDs and DVDs around the house. You can pop those into the PC and then you can transfer all of those photos over into the photo folder here and that's going to be the first steps towards organizing all of your data. You do the same thing with your music and with your videos. Now you can also view the server's file structure through a much more of a Windows browsing environment by selecting the server itself. And here we can see the different shared folders. Oh, I didn't mention one of the things that we can add to the USB ports that are built into the server is a shared printer. So you can have a network printer that the media server will also share and manage amongst multiple computers. That's a nice additional benefit, a nice additional network appliance that you can add. But let's move back in and take a look at how we organize our data a little more specifically. Once you've copied all of your photos, all of your music, and all of your videos onto the server, now you can access them from any computer on the network. So if you want to go and take a look at a slideshow and you want to look at any photos, you can go into the photo area, open up the photo area, and all of your photos are now available to you so you can view them in photo gallery or you can view them in a slideshow or you can use them for projects. They're available to you as though they're on a local hard drive on your computer. That's the beauty of a network drive. It's available to everybody on the network. Now I want to talk a little bit about configuring next, the different tools that we have to configure the device itself. And one of the most important things that you want to configure is backing up all of your data and backing up the different computers that are on the network. Now there's a quick select tool here. It'll back up the computer that we're on right away and do a manual backup. Or we can go into the home server controls and we can set automated backups. Regardless which way you choose, you want to make sure that all of your computers are taking advantage of the capabilities of the home server and backing up regularly. So if we take a look here at the different tools, let's just walk quickly through the different management tools in the console because they'll give you a good idea of the capabilities of the home server as well. It automatically will go out on the internet for software updates for security patches or additional capabilities. And this is very similar to Windows or any other operating system that will automatically use the internet for, back, uh, for upgrading and updating the operating system. We also manage remote access here, which we'll talk about in a later show, where you actually go on the internet in your office or in the hotel room at a distance, and you can actually access the server from that location. We have photo web sharing, so instead of sharing your photos by allowing people to access the photos directly, you can set up a website so that all your photos are shared on them. And then we have some other controls as far as the brightness of the display, but this one here is very important, settings for iTunes. One of the most valuable aspects of the server, in my opinion, is how it handles our music. Storing all of our music, actually pulling all of our music through iTunes off of all of our different computers, and then serving it to the appropriate music player within your house. And we set those settings within the server settings for iTunes. Let's take a quick second though and look through some of the other options that we have along the top here. As far as backing
setting up all of our computers. Here's where you set all the settings in place for configuring backup. And this is a wizard that you walk through that allow you to set incremental backups on a regular basis, on a timed and scheduled basis, so that your computer settings, your computer's operating system, or the files are all backed up to appropriate locations. Setting different user accounts so you can have individuals having private files as well as public files and folders and having access to the different areas within the drive. Shared folders, which tells you who has what folders on the drive, which ones are public access, and how much is stored in each one. And finally, the server storage area, which tells you about how much storage you have on your drives, how much space you have available, and the condition of the drive, if it needs defragging, and that sort of stuff is all indicated right here. Now, are you starting to see the value of a home network? The convenience of all of our files in one place, the added security of regular backups, and an easy-to-use interface that allows you to manage it. Now we've just scratched the surface of this device. There is much more to see, trust me. I've switched over now to my Mac because the Media Smart Home server speaks all languages. Que bueno. Let's take a look. I'm going to open up the Mac desktop and here I can see my shared files and my shared devices and I've got the Dotto PC which is the PC, the Windows PC that's on the network and the Dotto server which is our media smart home server right here. When I click on that it will connect me first of all as a guest. Now if I choose to I can click on connect as and I can connect as a registered user which will give me access to all of my private files but here I have access to all of the shared files. So I can go in and I can see and listen to all of the music that we have stored on the server. I can also go into the photo area and take a look at the same photos that we were looking at over on the Windows machine just a few seconds ago. I can double click on any of these photos and just as though I had a hard drive connected to the computer, over the network I can access the exact same files. I can stream video, I can stream audio, I can stream a slideshow, I can do all those things to either Mac or PC from the home server. Now the other area that's so important here is the extensibility, the fact that we can add to this server if we need. Now I talked about increasing the storage capacity earlier by adding more hard drives, but we can also add more functionality to the server. We can add more features to it because it is a computer. It has the ability to install new applications. A quick search on the internet will bring up dozens of home server add-ins. These are small applications and utilities that you can install on the home server that will add some additional functionality. There's everything from little utilities that'll say find duplicates of photographs so you don't have redundant photographs on your system to interfaces for home security products so that you can access your home security information from afar. I think that this product is going to become the base for real change in home computing. It only makes sense to begin to include a network server in today's digital home. But we really needed a good and solid interface. And HP has built a terrific appliance that will grow to meet our needs. And Microsoft has thought of most everything else in this product in the software side. And the fact that it's extensible, that new products, new services, and new capabilities will be released for it over the next few years means the Media Smart Home Server is going to continue to grow to meet our needs as the years go by. Blogs, podcasts, streaming video, you can find it all on our new website. Check out dottotech.com.